Good afternoon. Welcome to the Mass at St. Gregory the Great. My name is Gregory Tobin, and I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Leon Burnett, assisted by Deacon Paul Walter. Are you looking for an opportunity to renew your faith? Please take and read the bulletin for important information on our three-day Lenten retreat this Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday the annual Diocesan Men's Conference, Lenten Penance Services, our full schedule of Lenten events, and much more. St. Greg's School is offering a new video call information series to answer any questions you may have that pertain to enrollment decisions. Please see the bulletin for details. The readings for this liturgy are located at number 1120, again number 1120 in the Gather Book. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. As we gather this day, of course, we know it's the second Sunday of Lent, so we're really getting into the heart of the season of Lent, our time of prayer and penance and works of charity, our time to truly listen to the Lord and to grow closer to Him, to celebrate Easter with even greater joy. We bring our needs, our intentions, our prayers to the altar. We begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to come to the altar worthily and once again celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. I confess 
to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding me from me, your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather, was raised. Who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, 
such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Well, I'd like to begin today by asking a question for you to think about. If you were able to have a second home, and maybe some of you do have a second home, but if you were able to afford to have a second home, a vacation home perhaps, where would it be? What type of setting would you choose for that second home? Well, it's a great question to ponder, and for me it's a little bit difficult of a question to answer because I would like to have two second homes. You know, I, want, I would like to have the first one be overlooking the water. Why? Because I love looking at the water. And uh, I love looking at the immensity of the water. And I find looking at that infinite view as you go across the water to the horizon, very captivating, and very often it makes me uh, reflect upon my own baptism and the infinite call that that baptism really is to do many things for the Lord. Of course, our call of baptism calls us to do things for the Lord. On the other hand, my other second home goes along with the readings today, would be up in the mountains. And why? Well, the readings today, the scripture today, really calls us to think about the mountains and to simply be with the Lord. When I'm up in the mountains, I feel like I'm simply there to be with the Lord. And if we look through the scripture as a whole, really, very often, where did God meet with his people? It was in the mountains. If you go through the scripture, Noah's ark, after the waters receded, where did the ark land? On top of the mountain. And Moses received the Ten Commandments, where? On top of the mountain. And Moses goes where to talk with God? On top of the mountain. Elijah, he, he fights the false prophets, where? On top of the mountain. And uh, the temple is built, where? Of course, on top of the mountain. And Jesus gives us the Beatitudes where on top of the mountain, and Jesus ascends to heaven from what point? On top of the mountain. And uh, the readings today place us where? On top of the mountain. The very first reading, we hear about Father Abraham, and we know the whole story very well. Even though some of the verses are missing, we kind of jumped around a little in that reading today, but we know the story of Abraham being called to sacrifice his son Isaac. And where does that take place? On top of the mountain. Mount Moriah to be exact, it's even listed that way in the reading. And the second reading today, we're on top of the mountain. And it's alluded to, it's not specifically described, but it's definitely mentioned that uh, God sacrificed his son, our savior Jesus, where? On top of the mountain. Mount Calvary. Now it's interesting and important to note that Mount Moriah and Mount Calvary are really the same place. Mount Moriah is Mount Calvary. 
is Golgotha, is the place of the skull, and all of those other terms that we use during this time of Lent going towards Easter. So we're really on top of the same mountain. And uh, the gospel puts us on a different mountain. Tradition would say it's Mount Tabor, the place of the, can, the uh, transfiguration. And what is the transfiguration? But the real convergence of time and timelessness. We hear very clearly Moses is there, the great lawgiver. Elijah is there, the greatest of the prophets. And Jesus is there, top of Mount Tabor, an encounter to be with God for these three apostles. And it's on top of the mountain that a new perspective of timelessness is given, the timeless truth. And a further point that uh, you and I need to consider that we're on top of the mountain right now. Every time we come to church and we gather at the altar, we are at Mount Calvary. We are on Mount Moriah. We are on Mount Tabor. We are on top of the mountain. Why? Because every time we come to celebrate the Eucharist, we come to encounter God. We're on top of the mountain. It's really a, a good segue for us to consider our own personal, and really for our parish, our call a stewardship, the stewardship of our time, the time being with God, as opposed to simply doing things for God. That's the stewardship of our talent and our treasure. And you know that as a parish, we've focused on stewardship now for for many years, and three times a year we really reflect on it, and today our call to reflect on that stewardship of time, time spent in prayer. And once we are really intimate with the Lord in our prayer, then we are able to do for the Lord as we discern how to use our talents and what to use our treasures for in furthering the gospel. Stewardship really calls us first and foremost to reach into our mind, our heart, our soul, to spend that time in prayer, and afterwards then to go and do using talent and treasure. So stewardship is not just something about money, but stewardship is really the transformation of our mind, our heart, our soul, to be intimate with God. And it begins in prayer. And after that intimacy with God takes root, well, then we would think of doing nothing else but using our talents, using our treasures to serve the Lord. It's really also the call of Lent. Lent calls us to rely completely on God, to really evaluate our lives, the time spent in prayer, as well as the time spent in service of other works of charity. Lent calls us really to question, question where we are in that call of our discipleship, of following the Lord, to uh, serve him and to further the gospel in this place and time. So I'd like to invite you really in these remaining weeks of Lent, because they're going to go quick. Ten months from today is Christmas, you know. Start your shopping. And, uh, you know, Easter is going to be here before we know it. You know, use these, these few remaining weeks of Lent to really be a trip to the mountain. Encounter the Lord. Take time to sit and listen to Him. And as you listen, to learn and to use the Scripture, the Word of the Lord, to listen to Him and to pray. What is it we hear in the scripture today? Abraham is willing to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Well, maybe a simple question to ponder for Lent is, what are you willing to sacrifice? Now, I'm not suggesting you sacrifice any of your children or your grandchildren. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I am suggesting maybe we need to sacrifice some of our time that we utilize in other ways and redirect that time to prayer. Maybe some of the time that we we spend surfing the internet, maybe some of the time that we spend playing or watching sports, maybe some of the time that we spend watching television or or the time that we have, you know, for the coffee clutch to catch up on everything that's going on and maybe create a few things that are going on. You know, we, we can divert some of that time to be quality time to listen to the Lord, to be with the Lord, to be intimate with the Lord, and to gain insight, particularly if we pray with the Scripture, the Word of the Lord, 
to study that scripture. And there are plenty of things that we can make connections with in the scripture that really teach us how God is present through all of recorded time, including this very moment, to his people. For example, today's readings. Do you see the fulfillment in the New Testament of the Old? Do you see that in the readings? There. Do you see the parallels between particularly the first reading and the second today? Do you see the intimacy of God involved in the lives of his people? What do we hear? What are those parallels in the readings, first and second today? First one I already told you, geography. Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac on top of Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is Mount Calvary, where God the Father sacrificed his son, Jesus. Geography is the same. Secondly, both stories have a father willing to sacrifice their son. Abraham willing to sacrifice his beloved son, Isaac. God the Father sacrificing his son, Jesus. Both stories... We hear, in the first one, we didn't hear this detail. Who carries the wood? It's there, though. We just missed those verses. Who carries the wood up, Abraham or Isaac? Isaac, he's the one who carries the wood up that mountain. And who carries the wood of the cross up the mountain? Jesus, the son. It's the son in both cases that carries the wood up the mountain for the sacrifice. Both stories, we see that the son is willing to be sacrificed. Now, think about this for a moment. You've got to take a step back from what we heard and think and do a little math. Even the new math will come to the same conclusion. Abraham at this point in the scripture is about a hundred years old. Isaac, his son, is a teenager. Now even if Isaac, you know, a teenager, thought his father was losing it, wanting to sacrifice him, I think Isaac could have taken him down. He could have done that. Pop, you're losing your mind. But he didn't. He was willing to be sacrificed if that is what God wanted. And similarly, Jesus was a willing participant. We hear very clearly in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 53, after Jesus is arrested and the trial begins, Jesus said, Do you not think? that in a moment's notice I can call upon my Father and he would send 12 legions of angels to care for me. But I will not do that because if I do, the scriptures will not be fulfilled. Both sons were willing participants. Also, that ground that uh, Isaac and Abraham stood on, having tears of fear and tears of joy, the same ground that absorbed the blood of the cross as well as the tears of Mary, the mother of Jesus, our mother. And in both cases, we hear God provided the sacrifice. In the verses we didn't hear in the first reading, Isaac actually asks his father, we've got the fire, we've got the wood, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham says, God himself will provide the sacrifice. And in that instant, of course, as Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac and God the father stopped him, we hear that they caught sight of a ram caught in the thorns. And so that ram became the sacrifice. But Abraham was really pointing towards that sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God, the Father. God himself will provide the sacrifice. And isn't it interesting to note that as the ram was caught in the thorns, our good Lord wore a crown of thorns on top of that very same mountain as he was the sacrifice for you and for me. The connections that are possible is what we see God active and involved in the lives of his people to this very moment come to us in prayer. And it's that stewardship of time and prayer that calls us to that intimacy with the Lord. And in that intimacy, so many things are made known to us. And what is that we hear in the transfiguration in the gospel today? We hear the voice of God the Father. Only three times in the Gospels do we hear the voice of God the Father. The first is in the moment of the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. Second, in what we heard today, the transfiguration. And third, in John's Gospel, chapter 12, where God the Father says, I will glorify him in reference to his son, Jesus. What do we hear today in the Gospel? 
This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. Are you listening to him? Are you really listening to the Lord? As a parish, are we listening to the Lord? As a family of parishes, are we listening to the Lord? As a diocese, are we listening to the Lord? As a country, do we listen to the Lord as we profess to be one nation under God? And as a world community, do we listen to the Lord? God the Father's direct command, listen to him. That's the stewardship of time, time spent in prayer, listening to the Lord to simply be with the Lord. Now, if there's any physicians present, they may disagree with me in a biological sense, but on the spiritual sense, I have often thought that the good Lord gave us one mouth and two ears for a reason, to remember to listen to him twice as much as we speak. And in my case, I better do a lot of listening because I do an awful lot of talking, you know. Listen to him. This is prayer. This is the stewardship of time. This is the stewardship of time listening to the Lord and allowing the Lord to transform our mind, our heart, our soul to see how he is active and present in our life and calling us to be active and present to do for him with our talent and our treasure. In the pews, you have these cards, and if you're sitting at the end, I ask you to take, take one of the cards and pass the cards down. There's a card for everybody, and, uh, and the, it's not just one per family, it's one per person, so it's not just adults, it's our young adults, it's our teenagers, it's our, our young people too. And you'll, you'll notice that the card has got two sides, and it's also got a black line, heavy black line, down the center. That's because one side of the card is exactly the same as the other side of the card. And what uh, we're going to do, which we've done every year for several years now in the stewardship of time, I want you to take these home with you. And I want you to pray over this this of the week and think, well, what commitment am I going to make to be with the Lord? Not something you're already doing, but something, a new commitment. What, what am I willing to do to spend time to be with the Lord. And there's many suggestions on both the front and the back of the card. And uh, as you decide what you're going to do, you're eventually going to fold that card in half. It's perforated, you're going to tear it in half. And uh, the one side, this card, you're, you're going to fill out what you're going to do and you're going to bring it to church with you next week. And you're going to put in the collection. Why? Well, on one hand, if you're going to write it down and put it in the collection and it's going to go before the altar, it's a little more serious of a commitment to be with the Lord. Secondly, I'm giving you a homework assignment. I'm collecting it. I want to know what you're going to do. And I want to know what you're going to do because as the pastor, I want to know what you're committing yourself to for not only your own time with the Lord, but how you're going to be praying with and for our family of parishes. And the other side of the card, which is really duplicate, you're going to make a second copy of what you're going to do, and you're going to put this on the fridge. Or you're going to tape it to the computer screen, or you're going to tape it to the steering wheel, somewhere where you know you're going to see it. And every day as you see it, you're going to be reminded, this is my commitment to the Lord, to be with him, and to be reminded to spend that time with the Lord in prayer. And in so doing, be transformed to be of even greater service using your talent and your treasure. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you desiring to be with you, to have our mind, our heart, our soul transformed, to go and do the work of your disciples in the world today. Hear now our needs and petitions. Help us on our way. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit lead us during Lent to a fuller living of the Gospel and greater faithfulness to our baptismal commitment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the whole world. May our days truly become the acceptable time of grace, salvation, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all those who have left the church, that in this season of reconciliation, may they return to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the grace this week to see the glory of Jesus in all the circumstances and crosses of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish families, may they witness to the faith by an increase of love and reverence for the Eucharist this Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass, for the people of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Francis Denning, Diane Baker, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer you these needs spoken and treasured in our hearts. As always, we humbly pray, please hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The ushers will now take up the collection. The gifts will be brought forward by Matt Gomez and Carissa Anthony.
God forever. Bless the Lord God of all creation. Pure goodness, we can see the light we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work through the hands and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit, contrite hearts, accepted by your Lord, may your sacrifice. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, O powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. indeed holy O lord the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have 
fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Gregory the Great, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my, my soul shall be healed.
Before we conclude, just a couple of reminders. First of all, of course, uh, the uh, stewardship of time cards. We invite you to take those home with you to really prayerfully reflect on what ways you feel called to uh, listen to the Lord and to, to bring them back uh, next weekend to place into the collection. And uh, secondly, uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, will be the three days of Lenten retreat that we have every year for the parish. And this year, uh, we welcome back the alumni. We have Father Joe Tokaz coming tomorrow, Father Paul Sagan coming on Tuesday, and Father Moses coming on Wednesday. So three of our former uh, young associates coming back. And each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Mass at noon here and the talk following. Each day will be obviously a different presenter and the same talk given twice each day. But uh, in the evening, the presentations will be rotating around a little as a family of parishes. And so tomorrow, the 7 p.m. talk will be by Father Joe over at, um, at the Good Shepherd Parish. And Tuesday, by Father Paul at 7 p.m. in the uh, St. Pius Parish. And and then uh, Wednesday evening here. It's all in the bulletin. We do invite you to please come for that time of retreat, focusing really on the Eucharist, the theme of the retreat. And uh, finally, a reminder to all of our eighth graders that the eighth grade lock-in is coming up, and uh, you need to get your registration in for that if you're coming uh, by this Friday, which is uh, March the 1st. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body, to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. And we offer the prayer for renewal. In every Thank age, O oh God, you've you have called, called us to be your people, to be, to be your church. church. In, In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ in me, 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.